Welcome everyone to tonight's Water Pollution Control Authority uh, special meeting, Wednesday, June 2nd, 7 p.m. We have a uh, rather light agenda that's been uh, posted. Unless there's any proposed comments or questions, we'll proceed with the one item on tonight's agenda. Um, which is to consider an act to accept the proposal from RD Cinto to repair and replace the sewer pipes and related requirements on Thorpe on the Thorpe Street property as presented and approved by the WPCA staff. Once fully completed and accepted by the staff, the town will grant an easement on the Thorpe Street property to repair and maintain the sewer infrastructure. Further, RD Cinto will pay up to $100,000 for the infrastructure downstream th through the wetlands. And of course, there will be a rather substantial INI fee on the 148 units. Uh, so that's the motion in front of us. Let me, let me, um, let me, um, before I call for, um, actually, let me call for a second. I'll second it. Second. Joe. Okay, thank you. And um, let me let me give a, a bit of a, a backdrop to what's transpired over the last couple of weeks, and then I'm going to ask Bill and Chris to provide some comments also. Um, at our last WPCA meeting, uh, we were informed that there was a meeting with the town to discuss this project, and that certain agreements or, or uh, understandings um, um, uh, came to came to be. Um, uh, Rather shortly thereafter, Joe and I had a meeting with the first select woman, uh, the head of the Department of Public Works, uh, Bill Norton, and Laura Pooley, who is the a town engineer on this project. Um, I think that was a rather productive, uh, substantial meeting. Um, uh, we, I think Joe and I both gained a, a better understanding of some of the engineering concepts um, and what the town needs. Um, relative to some new infrastructure on this on, on this site itself, um, easements to the town so that when those um, new pipes are put down, those pipes are effectively deeded over to the town, similar to the Country Club of Fairfield project. Um, and um, so I think from an engineering perspective, um, the town is pretty comfortable with the setup. The issue really for consideration and discussion has been that the economics of this transaction have changed um, over the last four or five years that it's been in front of us. Um, there have been offers made and received and motions made and approved. Um, I've also been reminded that during that point in time, we've increased our INI rate twice. So it's one of those situations until the building permits are pulled, um, there's there's some back and forth. So, what what I'm suggesting is that if if we're comfortable with the infrastructure that's going improvements that are going to be made, and a, and a contribution above and beyond the I and I fee of up to hundred thousand dollars for the um, scoping and potentially the lining of this pipe. Um, I think that's a pretty fair trade. Um, I think going forward, we, we need to adopt a policy of um, what we're going to ask for or accept from developers. Um, some are happy to just pay the INI fee, and others, um, we, we get into these back and forth over additional fees. Um, but I think that's a discussion for, for another day. Um, but it is a discussion that we should have. Bill, if I could ask you um, to um, talk us through, I, I saw that there was a proposal to to um, from Great was it Great River, Green Mountain, Green, Green Mountain, Mountain. <laughs> Great River is a golf course, Green Mountain to uh, to televise the pipe. Have you have you had a chance to look at that? And, and do you know what those and can you walk us through the economics that came with that? Yeah, that was a proposal that was giving to the uh, the Cintos to go ahead and bypass <clears throat> from their property um, to Rudan Street um, and then line that pipe. So it was a I believe it was just under forty thousand dollars. 
Okay. Okay. Um, Matt had brought up a good point at the last at the last commission meeting uh, relative to kind of the timing and if infrastructure is being war being done on the property, there might be some uh, staging considerations that we bring into play. Matt, do, do you have any more thoughts on that? It's not often we have a resident expert on the on the panel. I, I don't know that I'd call myself a resident expert, but uh, I. So the bypass is the only thing that I don't totally have my head wrapped around in terms of how to even do it from the proposed doghouse manhole to Ruane Road. Um, I mean, obviously there's a way to do it. It's just, it, it would be, it sounds like it would be pretty considerable as far as the cost um, to intercept the flow from the doghouse manhole and then drop it into the, the manhole down on Ruane Road so that you can cl essentially clear that line so that we can clearly see it without any flow in it. Um, that's the ideal way to TV that line. It's just, it's also an expensive bypass. So, um, I'm not totally, I, I looked at the drawing that shows Green Mountain start at the existing um, in Ruane and progress upstream. Is that referring to TVing it or is that referring to um, lining it? What was that again, Matt? So the, the, uh, one of the uh, attachments to the uh, special agenda for tonight was the, the plan and profile that we had seen before, but it was marked up with a green line and then a couple different um, leaders on it. One of which on the manhole that's at Bruane Road says Green Mountain Pipeline Services Sanitary Sewer Video Inspection start at the existing manhole in Bruane and progress upstream. My, my question is when they're doing that, I mean, well, two questions. One is that the proposed, is, is this drawing meant to, meant for doing the construction for lining or, and if so, I mean, I don't see anything in this drawing about bypassing the green section of the, of the sewer. No, I don't believe this was their drawing for the lining. I think Green Mountain has already televised that line. I think that's what they were saying. They videoed it. Oh, okay. But they just, you couldn't, that's the video where we couldn't see anything. Yeah, where they were right. underwater. And yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, I think they got in 166 feet. Great. Right. Yeah. And, but uh, basically we saw, what we could see is, is not everything, but the, the water's pretty clear. So we got to see a lot of the pipe and structurally it looked pretty good. But we couldn't really tell everything. We couldn't really see the top of the pipe or, or tell if we were in a belly or not, you know. So we couldn't tell if something start where something started, where something stopped, because we couldn't get all the way through the pipe. I think what we're looking at, and then you look at the additional, uh, 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 the addition of the infrastructure that the Sintos are going to go on to the Thorpe Street project, and I think what they're looking at is the additional, you know, coming around that, their property and back into that new dog house manhole. Right. And, and seeing once that's constructed and tied in to see if that does anything to the elevation in the pipe. I think that's basically- We talked about it at the last yeah. meeting. So know. basically, I think that's what we're doing. I mean, either way, that, that infrastructure has to be built on the property for them right. to build. So either way, that's gonna happen. Whether right. whether there's additional work that needs to be done in the um, marsh crossing or not, that work still has to be done. Right, exactly. And, and so. since it's new pipe going from the existing manhole on the west side or north side of the, their property to the doghouse. I yep. mean, new pipe is new pipe. It's going to be an improvement over what's currently there. Yes. The, the question is whether or not they, what's arguably not their responsibility yes. is, has a problem on it, of which they're yes. contributing $100,000. So. Yeah. And now when I spoke to Ray Barr from Green Mountain, he, you know, and the concern with them bypassing, you know, is obviously getting approval from DEEP number one. Right. Uh, can they use lay flat hose, brand new lay flat hose, or do they have to use hard hose? You know, that's all additional costs and things. He did mention, and, I, and I'm not, I'm just throwing out what he said. I'm not sure it's feasible. Is if, you know, if we could plug the manhole and and uh, surcharge the line while they TV it, and and maybe not have to bypass. We do it right. late, late, you know, early in the morning. 
low flow. We have the additional infrastructure in place, that additional 20-inch uh, uh, line now going through the, the Thorpe Street project. Does it have enough capacity to let us do that, you know, quickly? Like, say we're going to TV the two, the 400 feet. Maybe if we can do it quickly, get 200 feet, pull the ball, pull a, pull a plug, let the flow get down to back to normal, then replug the line, do the, do the next, you know, 200 feet. You know, yeah. the only way you know that is if you try to do it. Have we have some. Has, sorry, Bill. Has there been any flow monitoring, um, at, especially at nighttime during that, to see? how low the flow gets we've done flow monitoring throughout the whole system you know and just to, to i and i measurements but we, we've never been out there just to look and calculate whether you know how 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 far that flow really goes down like at three in the morning yeah. right exactly usually I mean, when we're out there at three in the morning it's usually during a you know five inch rainstorm so <laughs> sure yeah um because i that's a good idea i think and i mean maybe we table it until after construction's done on their improved part both to see how much that's remediated the the issue but then also we can find out if somebody's willing to go out there late night to just pop that manhole and see what the flow looks like that could give us a good indication of um whether or not we would even have to do the bypass no i thought you know my guys would be happy to do it <laughs> No. Um, yeah, I mean, we can look at that and, and, and contemplate that. We can even try it, you know, uh, a trial run to see, right. you know. Mr. Matt, Vice Chairman. Matt, can I ask you a question? What, what is the risk or the danger? They're, they're improving the pipe. They're putting a 20-inch pipe there, and we're sitting and not knowing what we have in the wetlands as far as capability. Is there is there a, a danger at all to us to that exposure that we need to worry about? I mean, not that I'm aware of. If if they improve the pipe upstream of this area, I I don't see how it could contribute any kind of negative. I mean, short of breaking the existing pipe and having it flow down there and creating a blockage. Um, which uh, I, I can't, I mean, if, if they've got any kind of monitoring going on at that public house, then, I mean, well, they'll be bypassing anyway. So yeah, there, there's no risk. Bill and Chris, given the new infrastructure that's being, that's, that's now in front of us, are we comfortable that the easement gives us enough room in the event we need to get it, get to those pipes? Uh, yes, I believe we looked at the plan originally, and Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, we, we had to move a couple of the manholes so that we had, would have access with our uh, truck. Right. They were doing something in front of the building where it was going to be rounded, and we didn't think we'd be able to get to the uh, their manhole, and I think Joe Herrera moved the manhole a little bit and, and did, did a couple things to accommodate so that we would have uh, the ability to maintain that line. Bill, Bill, they were they were going to move that manhole when they closed that original 58 unit condominium. Did they? Are you positive that again when they moved it, it was with this new building? I, I remember they were talking about moving it to accommodate us on our trucks originally when they presented that 58 yeah. unit. I, I didn't hear it again. I didn't look at any plans, and I don't understand the plans. So. Well, I, I think they have, because I think okay. if you look at the plan, you know, instead of going down through that circle where the manhole right. was originally, and then through almost like underneath the building to the building, they've come around the building. Okay. So I think we have enough uh, access. I'll, I'll, I'll verify tomorrow with Joe Pereira. Okay. And then, uh, but I'm, I remember I'm, they I'm were going to accommodate us. I'm oh, sorry. I remember they were going to accommodate us, but I remember also that that was with the 58 unit uh, condominiums they were going to work around where you had uh, issued with you were yeah. concerned about the truck getting in just looking at the plan on paper the way they have it laid out here it okay. doesn't appear that we have any uh maintenance issues um it looks like we have enough access around the buildings to, and then down the street whether we have to you know either direction come with a, our flusher truck and do it but uh, i'll double check with joe to make sure that we have enough area Okay, so this is Quinn. I have a few questions. Um, Please. Is, you know, again, this thing is this thing's changed so many times. If we if we have to do a bypass because the flow is too fast at three o'clock in the morning, who pays for that? 
but does that come out of hundred thousand? Yes, that would come. Yeah, it, we would start whatever we do. The, the starting point would be that hundred thousand dollars, and then okay. and whatever and, the repair, and, and whatever, and whatever it, anything up and above that hundred thousand dollars would be whatever the town would have to do to do whatever needs to be done to that line that crosses the marsh. And, and Green Mountain. I was going to say just it's for gonna clarity. 40, oh, sorry. Go on. I was going to say Green Mountain said it's going to cost forty thousand to. Um, Camera it and line it, line the pipe. Yes. Okay. And if that doesn't work, then what? We're not going to do that until we've actually seen that. We're not going to line it without seeing it. Well, right. so, okay. So I mean, that was my whole pre premise. If it's clear. Right. But to, for, okay. to clarify though, so when they install their new pipe on their property, they're going to be bypassing from the start of their replaced pipe down to that doghouse man. And so that's going to be paid for by the construction. And once that construction is complete, we're going to have to look into, into whether or not we need to bypass from the doghouse to Wayne Road, or if we can TV it during a low flow, such as a, a night, nights and weekends type of thing. Weekends, just nights. So, Wait, how much does um, Cameron get? So, Cameron's going to cost the 40000 and potentially lining, lining, right? So, that would be a 60 I'm just trying to figure out how much is actually going to cost. TV without lining is considerably cheap. Well, TV without any bypass should be considerably cheaper. But those should have to be the When are you there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. No, I just wanted I wanted to make sure we were covering all your questions. No, you are. Okay. Anyone else? Comments? Questions? I think Sheila just put something in the chat. She had a question uh, of who the callers were. I think we have to identify who the callers are so she has it for the record. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is Quinn. I called in. Yeah. One of them's me. We have a call in user two, three, and five. Yeah. yeah. I'm calling I'm two. Six nine two five eight two three. The title of the numbers. Looks like there's two other calling users. Yeah, I think Quinn, are you user five? Yep. Okay, be. so we have to know who users two and three are. Who's, 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 I'm user two. I just typed that in. Okay. How do I know I'm what user, user I am? Yeah, how do I know? Well, you're all set because you're on with camera. <laughs> who's user three? You guys so I called in, so I'm probably I'm, user three then. Do they have the phone number? Can you guys hear me? No. Can you hear me? Yeah, who is this? Hello? Who's that? This is Mark. Mark Pisano with Cynthia. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's who I thought it would be. Mark. So I think we got everybody. Yeah. So so one of the users is Chris, one of the users is Quinn, and the other's Mark. So I think we got everybody. Yeah. As long as I have the camera on, they know it's me. Yeah. What's you, Ron? We could see you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> as long as you're using both your uh you know, your audio from your uh, computer. I think Chris is using both his phone and his audio. Okay, so that yeah. covers it. So Any I think we're comments? all set there. Any other comments or questions before going to a vote? Okay, all so, in favor? So this is Mark. Oh. This is Mark. Mark, you almost so had a vote. Sorry. I'm, I'm new with this guy, so I'm uh, so just to make sure, we are going to install on our property a brand new sewer system. We're going to put the doghouse in, and then the town is going to take over from there, and we we are going to contribute up to $100,000 for whatever they want to do. If they want to televise it, if, if maybe the SAG is on our property, they don't have to do anything. So that I just want to make sure everybody understands that. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's the motion in front of us. I think it's fairly clear. Great. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Quinn? Quinn. Aye. Can you hear me? Okay. Wait. So that's Aye, unanimous. Quinn. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Matt, I can't. Second. First thing. <laughs> You know, I didn't on the front end thank everyone for very last minute jumping on this. This allows the Cinto organization to go forward and pull permits. And uh, as always, I thank everyone for their participation. Nice work. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night, yes. Have a good, good evening. Night, thanks. Oh.